All right, hello class. We're going to go into our next section, which is section 2.3. Okay. In this class so far, we have looked at rational and irrational numbers. Okay. And so I have this circle here. The circle, circle consists of all of your rational and irrational numbers. Okay. Now, it within the real number system, Okay, you got these rational and irrational. And what I want you to notice is there's these circles within circles. Okay, rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction. So it may be a nasty looking decimal, 0 0.3333333333 three, 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 repeating forever and ever and ever, but that's able to be written as a fraction, one third. Okay, um, maybe I have four thirds. Four thirds is able to be written as a fraction, um, one half. That can be um, 0.5, but 0.5 can be written as one half. It can be written as a fraction. Okay, so any number that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. Now, with included in that are integers. Integers are numbers such as your negative numbers, um, including zero, and then all your positive numbers. Okay. Then you have whole numbers. Whole numbers just represent 0, 1, 2, and so on, your countable numbers. And natural numbers are your countable numbers not including 0. So 1, 2, and then so on. Okay. Notice a natural number is a whole number, an integer, and then a rational number. But a whole number is not a natural number. That's the bigger circle. So the smaller you get, the more specific you're getting within the circle. Again, not trying to insult your intelligence, but just kind of reminding you how to read a, a Venn diagram. Irrational numbers. <coughs> excuse me. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. So an example of an irrational number um, is 3.46928314269288, and it keeps going. Okay, there's no pattern to it. It can't be written as a fraction. Another example, pi, um, square root of 2. Okay, all these are different types of uh, irrational numbers. But what all of these share, rational and irrational, is that they're on the real number system, meaning if I look at a number line, okay, and here's 0, negative 1, and 1, I'm going to be able to find the value and place it somewhere on the number line. An integer, negative 2, I know it's going to be somewhere over here. A whole number, 1, that's going to be right here. A natural number, 1, it's going to be right here. Irrational number, even though I can't write it as a nice pretty number, Pi is 3.14 rounded. It's actually, it has more decimals in it. But 3.14 is going to be after the 3 and then around 0.14 and then whatever the rest of the decimal is. Technically, I could mark that on the real number system. Now, what I'm going to show you is there's another group. Imagine a circle right over here of numbers that exist that you haven't focused on yet. Okay, what are those numbers? They're not numbers on the real number system. Instead, they're called complex numbers. We also refer to complex as imaginary numbers. They don't appear on the number line. I can't mark them anywhere on this line. They're your ugly ducks of numbers in math. You know, they're the ones that just don't fit in. They don't go on the line. They can't. Nowhere. Okay? The way we represent complex numbers is by this imaginary number represented by a lowercase italicized letter I. As soon as you see that I, you know that you're dealing with a complex number. Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite this because I don't like the way this looks um, on this screen here, but it's extremely important that you learn this. The value of I is equal to the square root of negative 1. That is the value of i. You can also have i squared, which comes from this. If you square this and you square this side, what happens? The square root goes away, so that leaves you with negative 1. So these are saying the same thing, essentially, but you want to make sure you understand that. You want to make sure you can notice that if you were given a problem. I promise you, you'll need to be able to recite these on a test. You want to make sure you um, uh, know them. And it's going to be very essential for you to understand what i equals when you're dealing with a complex number. Otherwise, you can't even solve the thing. Okay, and again, you read this as an imaginary number. Okay, this is the standard form of a complex number, a plus b i. In web design, I'm not sure if it will accept it written the ver reverse way, like b i plus a. It may, um, it may not. I'm not sure. As far as me on a test, I don't really care. Um, as long as your numbers are accurate, you have the i in the right place, meaning with the right coefficient, doesn't really matter to me. I'm not uh, too particular about that. Okay. 
All right, so note that the standard form of the complex number includes the imaginary number. Now, I put this question here because it's a question on your homework. And when I first read it, I was like, huh? This doesn't make any sense. So I kind of wanted to include it here. It's something to the effect of, write, what if I asked you to write the number 48 in standard form, in the complex standard form? Okay, um, excuse me. Is it a complex number? What would the solution in standard form be? Well, is 48 a complex number? Hopefully you said no. Why? There's no I attached. It's a real number. I could put that on a real number system. So if I'm asked to write that in complex standard form, I can't. 48 is just equal to 48. So as silly as that question sounds, on WebAssign, when you see a question like that, if you're given a whole real number, or not even a whole number, just a real number, then the answer is whatever number they gave you because you can't write that as a complex number. Okay? All right, now looking at the next one, simplify each as much as possible. So the very first one, square root of negative 9. Okay? The way you want to look at that is you have the negative sign. The negative sign just represents negative 1, and then you have 9. Okay, can I take the square root of 9? Yeah, I can. The square root of 9 is equal to 3. But then I have that negative 1. Well, what's the square root of negative 1? Well, you just told me the square root of negative 1 is equal to an imaginary i, imaginary number. Therefore, I've taken the square root, I've written it in standard form, and they've written it as a complex number. What if I gave you the square root of negative 36? It's negative 1 and 6. What's the square root? Oh, excuse me, 36. I think I jumped ahead. What's the square root of 36? It's equal to 6. What about negative 1? I. So I've taken the square root and I've written it as a complex number. What about the square root of negative 24? That's uh, negative 1 and 24. What's the square root of 24? I can't take it. So what do I got to do? Hopefully you said simplify it. So you got to come up with two numbers that multiply to 24 and break it down as much as you can. So you may come up with 12 and 2. Some of you may come up with 6 and 4. It doesn't matter what you come up with. Just break it down as much as you can. I'm going to actually use 6 and 4. The reason being because I can take the square root of 4 to be equal to 2. I can also take the square root of negative 1, which equals i. What about the square root of 6? 6 is equal to 3 and 2. Can I take the square root of either of those? No. I can't simplify them. I can't do anything with it. So I'm just going to leave it. Okay? And you get 2i times the square root of 6. Okay, write the following in standard form. The square root of negative 9 minus 5. Well, that's not in complex standard form. I don't even see the letter i. And I see a square root. I don't want that. We just talked about how you're going to simplify this. You should get 3i minus 5. Okay, and again, you can write that as this, or I believe WebAssign may want it in standard form written in the correct manner. I'm not sure if it will accept this on the test. I'll accept it, but if you have issues on WebAssign, then just write it in this manner because it may want it in the pretty standard form. Last idea, complex conjugates. Complex conjugates are a pair of complex numbers, both exactly the same, except written with imaginary parts of opposite signs. Notice, imaginary parts of opposite signs. Doesn't say everything changes. It says the imaginary part changes. So 1 plus 2i. The complex conjugate would be 1 minus 2i. What changed? Only the sign associated with the i. What about here? 4i plus 1. Did my middle sign change? No. The middle sign is now associated with just the number. I didn't write this in standard form. Negative 4i plus 1 would be your complex conjugate. So just be careful that when you create that complex conjugate, you only change the sign associated with the imaginary term. Okay? And that actually wraps us up through section 2.3. Super easy section. Only eight questions for the homework. Um, I want you to have the practice. I don't feel that eight is very overwhelming. Um, so I'm not going to omit any questions from the section. All right. Um, good luck. As always, email me if you have any questions. And stay warm in this wintry weather.